So what we want to do is try and piece together. We've got like all these different values of uh, theta, all these different angles that we can put into sine. What's it going to look like? Now you already know some of these values, right? Um, some of them are really easy to work out. Sine zero, sine zero degrees, what's the y-coordinate here? You know this from last time. It's still zero, right? So if I have this as the theta axis, and this is the sine theta axis, okay? when theta is zero, when the angle is zero, sine theta is also zero, okay? I'm gonna go across here. That'll do. Now, let's go to the angle we're at right now, 45 degrees. If I make these markers every 90, then 45 will be somewhere in the middle, okay? It's 0 0.707. So let's put a scale up here. I'm gonna make a marker at one. I'm gonna ask you in about 45 seconds why I chose one. And 0 0.7 is like three quarters of the way up, roughly. So something like this maybe. There you go. Okay, that's at 45 degrees. So sine of 45 degrees is that 0 0.707 number, dot, dot, dot. What's sine of 90? Have a look. Where's 90? You've got your big unit circle, your nice one that you drew yesterday, right? 90 degrees takes you up onto, you've rotated up and you're here, right? So what's the y coordinate up there? It's one. So sine of 90 degrees, should be up here at one. Okay, now I said I was going to ask, why have I made one the top? It's the unit circle, that's as high as you can possibly go. There's nowhere up here, you can't get to 1.5 or two or three. So one is the highest you can go. And you can see that because as we keep going, you guys told me that sine 135 is the same number. You come back, right? So 135 is here. It's like that, it's coming down. It's strange. When we looked at parabolas, they just kind of went up and up and up. Cubics went up and up and up. This guy is sort of looping back. Okay, I'm gonna pause for a minute. You guys have number one, your unit circle. Number two, you've got a calculator. I want you to finish this out. Put some more points on there. What kind of a shape are you creating? I will give you about three or four minutes to try and put together a shape. And if you think you've got something, call me over. I've, been, I've, I've looked around at what a few of you have started to draw. Some of you are on the right track, some of you are confused, which is fine, because this is confusing. So let me help you out. Okay, shh, 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 shh. What am I doing? How am I getting these points? What I'm doing is I'm using my calculator, and I'm using the unit circle. I try out an angle, like say for example, 270 degrees. And each time the question I'm asking is, what is sine of that angle? Sine of 270, if I come back over here, 270 degrees on the unit circle, you start on the positive x-axis and you go around 90 degrees, 180 degrees, 270 lands me down here. So here's this spot where my finger is. What is the y-coordinate? Just the y-coordinate, because that's what sine is after all. What's the y-coordinate of where my finger is? It's negative one which is why I'm down here. Do you see that? Negative one, okay? And I keep on putting values in and I keep on getting points, okay? Now, what I notice is I get to 360 and I could keep going, but do you remember when you told me, oh, if you get something at 45, the same thing happens 360 degrees later and the same thing happens 360 degrees later after that. This shape from zero is going to start repeating at 360. It's gonna go back up like this, and then it's gonna do this weird thing. I guess my graph would go up to, what's the next one? 540. Now, what is this? You've never seen a shape like this before, which is why we're investing time into it. If you do your best to join the dots, and I'd love you to have a go at this now with a pencil if you can. This is the shape that you will create. Okay, now, this guy here, right? 
this guy here is strange. It waves around, up and down. Um, it oscillates is another way of describing it. Okay. Now we have a we have a fancy name for this kind of shape that exists not just in maths but also in maths. We call this guy a sinusoidal wave. Now, it's a weird long phrase, which is why mathematicians never say it. That's why we only ever say sine. Okay, it's a sine wave or sine curve. Okay. Now, by the way, quick piece of trivia. Whether or not you've heard of the word or not, um, you guys all know what a sinus is because you all have one. Actually, you have several. Um, the main one that people think of is the thing inside their nasal cavity. It's this curved section inside your nose, okay? And that's why you have a sinus, okay? So, sign. <laughs> sign is short for sinusoidal wave. Okay. Okay, let me help you. We're going to do this one a bit quicker because we're familiar with this shape now. We did sine theta. This, whoa, whoopsie daisy. This is the graph of sine theta. Okay. Now I want us to think about cos and I promise it will be quicker. Okay. Now, it is very closely related, but watch. I'm going to put down some basic points and then I'm going to join them all up. Okay. And you're going to help me. Let's start at the beginning. we we'll start at the origin, right? When theta is zero, that's here. What's cos of zero? What's the x coordinate of this spot? Look carefully. What is the x coordinate of this spot? It's one. So when theta is zero, when I'm on this axis, I'm at one. When I keep going along, when I think about 90 degrees, Look at where you are in the unit circle. You go all the way up to here. What is the x coordinate up there? Zero. It's zero. 90 degrees, zero. At 180 degrees, I come back around and it's negative one. Very good. Now you're starting to get a pattern here, aren't you? It's going to come back up to zero. It's going to go to one. And it's just going to keep on doing its dance. Okay. Now, if you fill in some in-between points like I did up here, you will find a very familiar shape emerging. It's going to look like this. Okay. Now, have a look closely. What I want you to do is notice, because I've got these right next to each other, right? Put your pens down and look up for a minute. I'm going to pinch this because it's closed. Look closely, eyes on the board. I want you to look at the sine wave. I want you to look at the sine wave. And I want you to watch carefully as I cover up a very specific section of it. See here from naught to 90? See this little spot here? I'm just going to cover it up. Now, when I do that, have a look at the sine wave now. Doesn't, doesn't that look... Familiar? It's the same graph, but, <laughs> but what part did I cover up again? What part? I covered up the first 90 degrees. 90 degrees. What does cosine have to do with 90 degrees? Ah, oh, it's the complement. It's the complement. This graph is the complement of this graph. It's off by 90 degrees, right? So, thank you very much. Okay, so this guy here, can you add in some values for me? <laughs> okay, this is the sine curve, this is the cosine curve, okay? Now, uh, I'll come to Tan in a, second, but in a second, but Tan's super weird, super, super weird. Can I just point something out before we leave off these graphs? Okay. Um, both of these graphs, I stopped, but only because I ran out of space. 
there's no reason to think that it will stop doing the thing that it's doing up and down and up and down. Right? So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to um, chuck an arrow on the end of that graph, and the same with this. It's never ending, but it's never ending in a particular way, right? The parabola is also never ending. The straight line is also never ending. But the sine and the cosine curves, they never end, but they repeat over and over again, right? In fact, if I covered, you know how I covered up 90 degrees? If I covered up 360 degrees, you just get exactly the same shape going up and down and up and down. So we have a name for this. When something repeats over and over again, we call it periodic. The periodic table. Now, the periodic table is named after this same idea because you know how there's the rows in the periodic table, yeah. right? Each row, the reason why you go on to a new row is because um, by the time you get to a new row, the new particle, the new, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, the new element that you've got has got similar kinds of properties to the element directly above it. You guys, you guys know this, right? You've studied the periodic table. So it's the same idea that you get the same behavior over and over again. These are called periodic functions. Okay? Um, they repeat forever. Okay?